case for metals. Organic tissue has a very different pattern of becoming, a different, a different, a very different pattern of becoming deformed, a different, a different pattern of changing as there's more and more weight, as there's more load, more push, more pull. The curve, in fact, looks like this. Now it's a nonlinear pattern. And today, nonlinear patterns are the rage. Why? Because they display much more the expressivity and creativity of matter. Linear patterns give you a, 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 a sense of matter as being still too obedient, too proportional, too well behaved. Nonlinearity is almost a synonym of badly behaved. You know, the expression, you know, going crazy, and then it became, you know, once uh, 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 male carriers began shooting each other, it became going postal. You know, hey, don't go postal on me, man. <laughs> you know, and now the expression is to go nonlinear. You know, it's like, don't go nonlinear on me. So, nonlinear patterns are basically like postal workers who shoot their co workers. <laughs> That is the, 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 the moral of the story. Organic tissue has that curve, which means that a very small load causes a long, a, a very, a very large deformation. This one, but then once you reach this point, the singularity, even as you increase the load even more and more, the organic tissue ceases to change. This is what this upper, this kind of almost a, a vertical line means. It's not changing, it's not moving in the, in the, in the deformation thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to display this at, at the risk of my own life. That's how much I love you people. I'm going to use my own lip to show you how this works, okay? I'm going to pull, and I pro, I'm going to pull my lip very, just very, very just a tiny pull, and, and, and you will see that with a tiny pull, it stretches a lot. Right? Tiny pull stretches a lot. Now, we are in this part of the curve here, right? It's stretching a lot. I'm still pulling. I'm pulling even harder now. Now we've just reached this singularity. As you can see, it's not, it's not, it's not changing in direction. I'm going to pull even harder now. Now we're up here. It's not changing at all. It's starting to hurt a lot. <laughs> See what I do for you guys. <laughs> See, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm risking my own well-being for you. Organic tissue has that shape because it is adaptive. It is good for tissue when a bone sticks out to at first respond with a very fast stretching, but then resist the stretching from then on. Otherwise, it breaks. It tears apart. It, 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 you know, and what you want is, is a material that's very responsive at first, but then stops responding right away. So there's a, there's a reason, an evolutionary reason for this pattern. But nevertheless, I'm not using it right now in that sense. I'm simply just illustrating what I mean by patterns of becoming. In this case, patterns of becoming deformed. It's really hurting my mind. I I, you know, next time I need to pull only up to this point, because I almost like tore off my lip. Okay, okay, calm but down. Did it take Otto to um, come up with this um, para hyperbolic um, parable, par paraboloid uh, in order to, uh, for Hook or other uh, contemporaries to come up with this in instead of the vector, the parable, the, the no, Well, not really because they belong to entirely different, different centuries. I mean, Fred Otto is from, you know, he did this in the 60s. Hook did this in the 1600s. Right. So, uh, but it did take Fry Otto because materials science departments didn't exist. As I said, the very first one was at Northwestern in 1950s. In most other universities, material science is taught in an obscure corner of the chemistry department or an obscure corner of some engineering department. No one wants to talk to the metallurgists. And it's like, you know, they are minor scientists. They don't have any prestige. They don't have any, you know, they have hardly any legitimacy. Let me just give you one more pattern to finish this part of the explanation. This is the pattern that rubber has. 
you know, rubber as in the organic material we use for rubber balloons. Rubber balloons have this pattern of deformation. It's an even more complex, still non-linear, but now it has two singularities. One here and one here. That is two inflection points at which the curve changes direction. Everybody has tried to blow a rubber balloon for a kid's party, and, and you know how it, it goes. You know, you take the balloon out, and at first, you, you don't, you're, you're not pulling now, you're pulling from the inside, so to speak, because you're blowing air into it, and the more air goes into it, the more it pushes against the walls of the balloon, right? So what happens normally is that you try to blow into the balloon, you go, and nothing seems to happen, right? That's that part of the curve. You're blowing, you're blowing, you're putting more of a load on it, but it, it, it just refuses to yield. Then at some point when your, your face is all red, and you go, you add a little bit more of a, of, a, of a blow and the balloon goes, and all by itself moves a lot with a very little thing. That's this part of the pattern here. Then finally, you keep blowing, it keeps growing larger up to a point where it refuses to continue growing. At that point you notice it because you keep blowing and the balloon doesn't change shape anymore. Now you cross that second singularity and you have gone into this vertical part of the rubber here. So rubber has a very, very different pattern of becoming. Yes? Are the patterns of becoming uh, what Deleuze refers to as a machine of phyla? Uh, the, the patterns of becoming? Machinic phylum? Well, the term machinic phylum, which we will come back to it tonight, it is the sum total of all the patterns of becoming. Okay. Right? It, it would be like, if you put, you've got all the, all the different patterns of becoming, which is of course an infinite number. There, there's no limit to patterns of becoming. Because if you think that you've reached the limit, then you take things that have never interacted, you make them interact, there will be another way of changing, which adds to the thing, then whatever product that goes, make it interact, and you can keep expanding patterns of becoming. And yes, the Luz and Qatari use the word machine phylum precisely in that same chapter, the nomadology chapter, to say those patterns that are imminent to, to, to the earth, the metallurgist has to follow. When he says, you know, the metallurgist has to track the machine phylum. He has, to, he has to follow, you know, what happens when you combine tin and copper to get bronze? Or what happens when you combine iron and carbon to get steel? You know, you have to be following those patterns, those combinatorial patterns, or in this case, those mechanical patterns, to see how metals behave or, or not behave. A carpenter also has to follow, you know, in a whole different, sen different, different senses. For instance, a carpenter knows that if you want to get something smooth, you need to respect the wood. You need to respect the way the fibers of the wood are lined up. So you sand with the grain, as, as a carpenter would tell you. You never sand against the grain. You do sand against the grain and you get this kind of spiky thing. And you might want that for aesthetic effect, some kind of punk hair effect on wood, which might actually be interesting. But if what you wanted to get is a polished piece of wood, for a tabletop, for instance, you have to follow the wood. You have to let the, good, the wood guide you because it has its own, it's not an inert material. It has a material that has an inherent response curve, so to speak. Of course, it's a different, it's a different becoming. It's the becoming smooth of, of a piece of wood, not the becoming deformed, but nevertheless, it's a becoming and has a pattern. And you need to respect it. You need to sand with the grain, not against the grain. Now, even the most domesticated and most uh, obedient and most law-like patterns, like the, 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 the ones that happen on, on, on mild metals and the ones that now have the, the name Hooke's Law, can become nonlinear if you apply sufficient intensity to it. This is where, again, the, the whole thing about intensities that we've been talking about all for all the three days.